Okay, let's start. Today we are going to talk about the k-means clustering, mixture of Gaussian, and expectation and maximization. Before starting, uh, we have a uh, two uh, reminder. Actually, I it was the last uh, uh, last week the reminder, but I this is the final reminder. First of all, uh, we have a course project proposal presentation. Uh, as you know, the we have you have to prepare the video that record your proposal PPT slide with the voice uh, explanation in English, and please submit the uh, video and PPT uh, through the my email until the end of this week. So, so if you wanna start yet, please start as soon as possible. Okay. So this is the this is related to the project proposal. The second one is we. Do not have a midterm exam in this semester, okay? So please keep in mind. By the way, we have a we have a class during the with uh, midterm midterm exam period, okay? Okay, let's start. Uh, today we are going to talk about the unsupervised learning. So until last week, we we've talked about the supervised learning technique. So what is the supervised learning and unsupervised learning? If you go back to the our uh, first lecture, there is the there are um, some figures some, looks like this. So as you can see here, the in the left image here, there there are training samples, something like the x x n. It means that the x n is the uh, feature vector that consisting of the uh, scalar value, um, something like this. Something like that. So, uh, concretely, the this is the x one one. No. Okay, let's just uh, x n and x two. So this is a two, uh, two feature values in the uh, feature vector. And as you can see here in this, uh, in this scenario, they have the class label such as the y1 through the yn something like this so in this case uh this one and this one have the different uh different class label so so the goal of the supervised learning is to find some uh decision boundary something like something like this that that separate the training samples with the different training label right so this is the supervised learning then what is the unsupervised learning? We don't have the, we don't have training label anymore. We only have the input feature as a x x one through the x n. Then what we want to do is to to anal uh, to analyze the distribution of the training samples such as the uh, such as the group like this. So yeah. So this is the kind of unsupervised learning. So today we 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 will going to uh we'll be going to talk about the unsupervised learning, especially the k-means clustering, which uh which is one of the uh, most popular technique in unsupervised learning technique. Okay, so the there are several kinds of the application using unsupervised learning technique. The the most most popular one is the market segmentation that used in in analyze the users the statistics and there is another technique such as the social network analysis like in facebook or the sns something like that by using the unsupervised learning technique we can group we can group the uh, user uh in terms of the their interest or their ages something like that their in, in terms of their information so this is a kind of the application of the supervised learning technique, and there is another uh, application, uh, competing cluster organization, something like that, or uh, astronomical uh, data analysis. Because we don't actually, we don't have the uh, cr uh, crown truth label, if uh, for the astronomical data analysis, because we don't know the crown truth, right? So in this case, we definitely have to use the unsupervised learning technique okay so so what is the clustering the cluster the cluster are group of the point 
grow the point whose interpoint distance are small compared to the distance outside the cluster. What does it mean? If you can see the figure, okay, here are some training samples, right? Something like this. This is the training samples, right? So, yeah. Let's see. So, train example, and the cluster looks like the, looks like that. Okay, if we have the cluster something like this, something like this. In this case, uh, this set of the training samples are called the clusters. Okay. So the then what is the clustering? What is the clustering? The goal of the clustering is to find the prototype point. You want you to draw the UK when K is equal to number of cluster and cluster assignment variable. Let's go what Zn. Zn in the one through the K when K is equal to number of number of samples for the where is that? Yeah, n samples. I mean, the m means the index for the info vector xn. Okay, in this case, in this case, this is just the input vector xn, something like d, right? In this case, d is equal to what? d is equal to 2 because this is the uh, 2d case, right? Then, then, the cl uh, cluster assignment, something like, something like, okay, let's say this cluster is the cluster, um, cluster one. So in this case, cluster one, and let's say this is the cluster two. Then because the this sample is uh, is involved in the cluster true cluster two so in this case that n is equal to two okay so this is the cluster assignment cluster assignment okay then what is the prototype point in this case so, uh, we have to we have to find the representative point of each class each cluster so in this case let's say this is some point here some point here so in this case these two vector uh vectors are representative point of each cluster so in this case this is called the uh uk uk means the uh, prototyp uh prototypical point okay so this is the goal of the clustering okay so the in other words the uh, Goal of the clustering is to find the point you want through the UK and the cluster sign one G, uh, Zn given the input picture vector Xn. So okay, this is the k uh, This is the goal of the clustering. Okay, then what is the k clustering? As I mentioned here, the k clustering have the same objective. The here is the objective. So okay, let's say L Z U is the cost function. Then we have to find the Z and U. Z uh cluster assignment Z and the proto uh, prototype point U. Okay. Then what is the cost function for the chemical clustering? Here is here is the cost function. Okay. What does it mean? What does it mean? Okay. Uh, from n is equal to one through uh one through the n n is was the number of samples right and k is equal to one through the k large k then large k means the number of number of cluster then the objective function of the chemical clustering looks like this. So J, uh, Z and K 
times the xn minus uk. So this is the distance between xn, each xn, each samples with the cluster center or just call the proto, uh, prototype point here. So, so in this case, so yeah, uh, mu k, mu k is the uh, vector with the same size of the xn, right? Then ZnK means ZnK means so ZnK is the one if n n uh, n, um, n sample assign to cluster k okay so in this case if the n samples is assigned to the cluster k then z and k is just one otherwise it should be zero okay so in other words the uh if we collect the collect the Z value across the uh, N and K like that, then the objective the whole possible value of Z should be some kind of the uh, matrix form matrix form something like that then the what is the size of the uh, this matrix because there is a transport right so it should be something like this then it looks like this um, okay mm, this that z1 2 1 z and 1 z and k okay Check that. Then what is the size of the, this matrix? What is the size of matrix? N rows and K columns, right? So this is the this is the Z. So this represents the uh, cl uh, cluster assignment for each sample, right? Then what is the mu? Mu is the mu is mu is the this one okay so mu is the uh, centroid of the each cluster so it should consist of the some vector like this so what is the size of this mu matrix what is that okay right so in this case uh, number of uh, rows are uh, k the number of columns are uh, T, right because the 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 dimension of the feature is the t right so this is the uh, k means cluster objective function and then what does it mean what does it mean from here for each sample for each sample we have to find the we have to find the close uh cluster centroid uk then with some with some class cluster membership cluster membership for each for okay let's see draw again for for each uh, x n x u k and z n k okay this is the cost function of the k means clustering okay so 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 for this one, we have to find the Z and mu, right? Then how can we solve this? How can we optimize the, this cost function? As you can see here, there are two variables, Z and mu, so it looks really hard to find the find the minimum by using the um, some 
some previous uh, optimization techniques. So we need some mm -hmm. another method to solve the this cost function. So here is the algorithm. So this is the k-means clustering algorithm. First of all, we have to initialize the mu. Then we have to iterate uh, iteratively serve the z and mu. Then how? First of all, for a uh, whole n for whole samples, for whole samples, we have to compute the class membership, cluster membership, given new, right? And then, and then, and then for whole cluster, for whole cluster k, we have to compute the class class entry uk, class entry uk given given z okay so in other words we um we have to find the z and mu iteratively okay so this is the main idea of the uh, k-means clustering okay let's see the detail first step this is the first step for whole samples n here samples here here Compute, compute Z N, compute Z N given mu. Okay. Here's the example. Okay. Let's say this is the mu one. This is the mu two. Okay. Two close uh two close of centroid. Then, uh first of all we have to find the class membership. Then how? Okay. Let's think about this point. For this point, which cluster centroid uh, uh, more closer than the other? To answer this, we have to measure the distance between this point and this one, and this point and this one, right? Then, which one is the closer? This point, right, right. In other words, for for whole uh whole k uh or cluster number, we have to measure the distance with the feature vector and cl uh, cluster centroid, and have to find the have to find the index that that make the minimum values, minimum cost, or minimum distance. So. In that case, this is called the ZNK is equal to 1. In other words, ZNK equals 0. Okay, so it means that for whole samples, we can find the cl uh, cluster uh, membership. So, yeah. By update thing these samples let's use this color these samples are closer to the this point than this point okay another case these samples are closer to this point than this point right so in this case we first uh, uh, first separate the initial training samples as a two two class, right? And then in the second step, for whole cluster, we have to compute the cluster uh, cluster center or the cluster vector given class uh, class membership Z. So here from here. We have to find the new mu k, new mu k. Then how? Then how? Given z or fixed z, we have to find the z k, right? So from here, if the z is fixed, we can find the mu by what? By using the derivation, right? So 
by taking the derivative with, less, with respect to the mu k, then, okay, let's say this is a mu z, something like that, then by taking the derivative of the, this loss function with respect to the z, then we have to find the value mu when this derivative is going to be zero. So you will be making the new equation like this. So, so what is that? This is the average vector xn with the whole possible cluster, cluster point. So what does it mean? Here is the example. Okay, from this samples, we can make a new samples here. We can find the mu two, new mu two. Then for this one here, we can find the new mu one. Okay. This is a new uh, next iterate uh, next iteration next iteration closer center, right? Then comparing to the previous point here and here, uh, these two points uh, represent much better than the previous one. So this is the new closer point or new cluster centroid. So that's why this uh, this algorithm is called the k-means because the, this is the uh, mean of the k samples, uh, mean of the uh, k cluster, okay? So this is why we we call the, this algorithm as a k-means clustering, okay? Then this is very intuitive. And so this is a summary of the k-means clustering for um this algorithm consisting of the two uh two iterative the so uh two iterative how to say solver right so here so first of all given mu we have to find the z here so that nk is the is the zero uh, is the one when the uh k is equal to argument of the of the input vector xn with the cluster center u mu j. Okay, so this is the cluster um, cluster membership. Then another step in the another step, given z given cluster cluster membership, we have to update. We have to update the mu k. Let's say this is update. Okay. So we have to update the mu k using the some kinds of the mean mean value. Okay. So this is the uh, k means clustering. So by using the iterative solution, iterative optimization, finally we can find the mu and z that minimize the loss function of the k-means uh, k clustering like this okay so this is the k-means clustering algorithm this is very easy right then this is very intuitive but this is very uh uh this makes the very powerful solution for the k um uh, the clustering technique and the convergence to the local minimum is guaranteed because the every step decrease the cost each other. So the convergence to the local optimum of the chemi in chemical clustering is it's assured or guaranteed. Okay. Okay. So this is a summary of the chemical clustering. As you can see here, this is the uh, this is the input sample input picture samples with the two cluster centroid mu1 and mu2 right then then what should we do first of all 
we have to find the closed membership chat, right? Something like this and this. We we first separate the initial training samples as a two class, right? Then what what next? We have to update the uh, mu, the close close centroid mu, okay? To here and here, right? Then then we have to update z again, z again, according to the this fixed mu. So new class new class of membership will be look like that, look like that. Then what next? We have to update mu again, right? As as here here. Then what else? Update the Z again. So drag here and here, right? Then what next? What next? We have to update the mu from from here to here, right? What date the mu to here and here? Then find the Z again. But but interestingly, from here to here, there's no change anymore. And this decision boundary, actually it's not an explicit decision boundary, but this cluster, cluster membership, are exactly the same to this one, right? So it means that there is no change anymore. And no change anymore from the it uh first uh uh third iteration right so in the in this case we we can say that the our algorithm is converted to the uh local minimum right so finally from the initial samples we separate those samples as a two class according to their distance, their, uh, their inter-distance, okay? So this is the summary of the k-means algorithm or the k-means clustering algorithm, okay? So then there is one issue. How can we, com how can we compute or the, how can we choose the initial UK, initial close, close center, okay? Here is the idea. So there, there will be the several kinds of way to to choose the uh, initial k centers, but the very common method is just the randomly sample or the randomly pick k training examples. What does it mean? Okay, this black point, uh, our training samples. Then, uh, if uh, let's say we want to cluster those samples as a k is equal to three, then we can just we can just pick the three point something like that or okay let's say let's throw here uh just select the k uh k training example like this or something like this or Something like that. We can we can freely choose the three training uh three initial samples, right? Then then set the u uh, mu one mu two through the mu k equal to the this k example itself. Okay, so this is a very uh, simple initialization method. But there's problem. There's problem. As I mentioned here. Uh, the original KMG clustering method just guaranteed the uh, local minimum, not global minimum. So this local minima, uh, this local minima is depending on the initial uh, initialization. So as you can see here, uh, if we samples something like this, uh, uh, according to the how can we extract the initial samples, the final clustering uh, uh, output looks like this, this, and this, 
So in in the in those case, the we can say that this one is the most effective, most effective cluster than the another one, right? This one and this one, right? So why? 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 As you can see here and here, uh, these two cluster center, the center of the two cluster, uh, clo uh, close, right? What does it mean? What does it mean? Those center, uh, those cluster have the similar meaning or the similar, um, uh, similar, uh, similar probability, um, effect. So in this case, though, uh, this is not a good, this is not good cluster. So those one, those one are much better than those, uh, this case, right? So it means that we we carefully choose the best initial cluster center, right? Then how can we do that? We can use the random initialization technique with the iteration. So here is the algorithm. Um, for each i, as bearing the num uh, as bearing the i, let's say i is the one through the um, how to say. 1000 like that then first of all randomly uh, initialize the k-min right mean the mu okay then run k-min clustering algorithm this one right then after after clustering compute the cost function cost function of the each k-min cluster then we trade the those things those things for i is equal to 1 through the 1000 uh, 1, then after that pick the clustering that gives the low, uh, lowest the cost li z, z mu so in this case this will be chosen right comparing to this one and this one okay so this is uh, uh, some kind of technique to find the uh, uh, to find a good initialization, okay? Okay, so the chemical clustering algorithm um, can be interpreted in the as a coordinate descent algorithm. What is the coordinate descent? If you remember the gradient descent in the previous hour lecture, okay. Here is the here is the cost function in two D space, two D space. Okay, okay. So do you remember this is the how to say contour plot of the three uh, D cost function, something like this, right? If you remember, this is just the contour plot of the um, uh, loss function in three D space. Okay. So if you are not uh, remember, please go back to the, our previous lecture in the lecture three, maybe. Okay. Then what is the what is the uh, what what was the gradient descent? Okay, this is the optimal solution. Then let's say we start from here. Then the gradient descent is just to to follow the gradient direction, something like this, something like this, something like this. Right. It was the gradient descent algorithm. Then what is the coordinate descent algorithm? The coordinate in the coordinate descent, we can decompose. We can decompose the coordinate. Let's say in this case this is the let's say this is x one and x two. Then, uh, we can decompose the coordinate as x one and x two and serve the um each object uh serve the objective function in terms of each point, each coordinate, or the each axis. So in this case, if we use the coordinate descent algorithm, it will follow the line something like this. First, uh, in the first stage, we just optimize across uh, across the x1, and in, the, in another step, we just follow the uh, objective. Uh, we just follow the line something like this across the 
x2 axis, uh, x2 axis, then x1 axis again, and x2 axis again, something like that. So this is the uh, coordinate descent algorithm. So this the main idea of the coordinate descent is to decompose the each axis or the each coordinate to iteratively solve the optimization technique. So so k-means clustering is the kind of the coordinate descent algorithm where to find the minimum z mu with the loss function of the z mu. We start with uh, some initial mu mu zero and repeat or iterate the following two optimization. In first case, we have to find the z t plus one. Then argument z uh, loss function z mu t. Okay. Then what next? We have to find the mu t one, mu t plus one. How can we find that? Just find the argument of the this loss function in terms of mu. So, in other words, in this case, this should be fixed. Uh, this one should be fixed. Okay. So by iteratively solve these two uh, optimization type optimization problem, we finally find the mu and z like that okay so this is uh, this is the coordinate descent algorithm so k means clustering is the kind of the coordinate descent algorithm okay so here's the example here is the uh, examples of the k means clustering okay so k means clustering algorithm can be used as the data compression for the images this is also known as the vector quantization what does it mean okay here is the original image here. Okay, let's say there is the um, 100 pixels on the column and um, 300 pixels on the row, something like that. So in this case, this is just uh, 300, by, 300 by 100 matrix, right? Then what else? If you remember our uh, first lecture, the image consists of the RGB value, something like this. RGB value, right? So, so the size of the image can be represented something like uh, 300 by 100 by 3, right? It is just a tensor. Okay, so we will discuss this uh, tensor rotation from the neural network part so don't worry about that but anyway so it means that the point or the data that we have to we have to remember is the large like that right this is very very large value so it is hard to hard to memorize in the in in the memory right then if we use the k means clustering something like that when uh, k is equal to 10 or k is equal to 3 then we can we can find the cluster cluster in the rgb space what does it mean okay let's draw something like that here is the r g B space, then each point, each point will be represent in the three D space, something like that, right? In this case, number of samples is what three hundred by one hundred, right? Right. So in this case, if we use the k-means clustering, let's say k is equal to 3 here, then we can find the 3 cluster, something like that, with the cluster center as a mu, right? So, so if you can see here, those values, those points have the same, same values as a mu, is equal to 
mu1 is equal to uh, arbitrary value, look at that, then those point have the same value as a mu2 and this one has a mu3, a mu3, right? So what does it mean? We can represent this image as a 300 by 100 by What does it mean? We can represent the Here is the here is the data point then um, in this case, we can just represent the image as a uh, three vector, right? Because the mu one is just a uh, three dimensional vector, right? So this is we can quantize those uh, kinds of original image as a, a new uh, image, uh, new image type, something like that, right? So this is kind of the data compilation or the vector quantization. And yeah. And, and then I want to uh, I want to uh, recommend to you some very interesting paper called the deep clustering for the unsupervised learning of the PD, uh, visual features. Actually we didn't talk about the uh, deep learning or the deep visual feature yet, but Let's just think about the, this convolution net or the this, this, this deep neural network as just a machine. Let's just think about this is a machine. Okay. For example, something like SVM or the um, what is that logistic uh, regression something like that. Then let's uh, let's let's suppose we only have the image. It means that this uh, this is just vector input vector x. Then we want to find the class label of the image, such as uh, this is car, this is the uh, this is the flower, something like that. But we don't have the class label here. Here, so so we we cannot use the some kind of the uh, supervised learning technique here, right? Then, however, in this paper. They use the clustering method that is unsupervised learning technique, right? Then they find the pseudo label, pseudo label. Then by using the this pseudo label, they training the this machine using the pseudo label, and then finally they can find the class label, class label only using the unsupervised uh unsupervised signal or the uh, training samples that only have the input feature, okay? This is a very interesting idea. Then it means that they try to uh, aggregate the, the advantage of the supervised learning and unsupervised learning technique. So this is a very interesting paper. So if you have some interesting, please try to uh, understand this paper, okay? Okay, so... Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so this is the K-means clustering algorithm. Uh, before move to the people move to the um, GMM model or the Gaussian mixture model. Actually, Gaussian mixture model is the um, generalized version of the K-means clustering algorithm. So it is much more. It is much more um, effective and efficient and Actually, it's not efficient, but it's, uh, it is uh, very powerful to cluster the uh, some initial input uh, initial input samples, and it is based on the powerful uh, probabilistic theory. So maybe um, you can you maybe you have some trouble to follow every line. So people starting, we we can start from the probabilistic interpretation interpretation of the our um our learning algorithm okay okay let's start uh before uh before starting 
Uh, if you remember the Gaussian random variable, the equation of the Gaussian random variable is, looks like this. In this case, x is the random variable, mu is the mean of the samples, and sigma is the variance, right? So in this case, the, the probability of the random variable can be represented something like this with some kinds of constant values and the exponential of the uh, x minus mu. It means the distance of the x and mu, okay? So this is the general formulation of the Gaussian random variable. Then, what is the Gaussian random vector? This is also called the multivariable Gaussian random variable. So it means that Comparing to the this one Gaussian random variable, in this case, in this case, we think about some kind of vector, something like the x one, x two, through the x n, something like that. Then, what is the mu of the this vector? Mu is also some kind of the vector, right? Right? Then what is the covariance matrix? Covariance matrix, something like the matrix um with um uh what is that? Yep. Here. Just one two one one mu one two square something like mu uh n n square. So, the number of rows are n, the number of columns are n, okay? So this is the kind of the covariance, okay? So in this case, we can generalize this one as uh, some kind of this one. Okay, so this is the Gaussian random vector. So the shape of the Gaussian random variable and Gaussian random vector uh, looks like this. I think that these figures will help, help to you, help you to understand the shape of the random variable or, or random vector okay so as you can see uh, in the left image if we if we just uh, considering the scalar vector x just scalar random variable x then the gaussian random bear uh, gaussian random density of the gaussian random variable are uh, looks like this right something like this something like this something like that right so, so according to the this mu value, the center of the this shape is determined, right? Then, by using the this this variance, this variance values, okay, let's do that. This variance determine the shape of the shape of the this function, right? This is one D case. And this is the 2D case, but 2D case is also same, same, same as the 1D case. What does it mean? So in in the 2D case, it has the 2D, uh, 2D uh, mean bell, uh, mean point and the covariance matrix. Covariance matrix determine the shape. Shape of the Property, property function, something like this, this, like that, right? Then, so as varying the covariance matrix, we can determine the uh, the shape of the random Gaussian random vector, okay? So this is the uh, concept of the Gaussian random variable. So, so by using this concept, we can interpret, in, we can interpret, take, we can interpret, take, the linear regression problem in a probabilistic manner. Okay, let's uh okay let's think about the uh, training sample x n and y n. So in this case, this is the input, and this is the output. Okay, right. So so what was the uh, regression problem? Okay, if you see the this figure. So the these bullet point uh training samples, then uh what you want to do is just find the this straight line, the parameter that represents this straight line, 
straight line, right? So the parameters of the, this straight line is generally represent as a W, right? So the goal of the linear regression is to find the, this W value, right? Then now we can assume that these training samples is generated by the some arbitrary model, arbitrary model, such that y n is equal to w transpose times x n plus e n. What does it mean? What does it mean? In this case, this e n is the noise. Why? This is the noise. Why? Because this is the difference between the ground truth y n with the estimated output, something like that, right? So this e n is the called the noise, right? So we can assume that this noise is just the Jeromean Gaussian random variable with a variance sigma square. What does it mean? Let's see the, this one. Okay. Okay. Let's say we have we found the this straight line with the parameter w, right? Then, then let's draw some uh, histogram of the error. Let's draw some. Okay, this is the histogram of error. Okay. What does it mean? Okay, for this point, the errors are here, right? For this point, errors are here, 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 something like that. Then we can accumulate the, this kind of error. So then the histogram of the error sum looks like this, right? So in this case, this x axis means the e n is the y n minus w transpose x n something like that. Then then if you can see the shape, the shape of the this this histogram of the error or the property of the error, the shape is looks like this, right? 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 This is similar to the this one. Right? Then what does it mean? We can say that the noise E N noise E E N is the Jeromean Gaussian random variable with the some very uh variance right then as increasing the number of training samples then errors follow the shape of the Gaussian random variable so this is the our assumption but this assumption is very powerful then so um, most our real world training samples uh, follow the this rule okay so so this is the main assumption then the noise the the e n is the independent of each other, independent of each other. What does it mean? For uh for each sample e x x one, y one x two y two through the x n um y n uh noise noise for each samples are independent. So. So we can represent the uh, we can represent the uh, linear regression using the this property interpretation. Let's see. Okay. Given n sample, given n sample, something like x one y one x two y two through the x n y n right. The likelihood. The likely of the uh, likelihood of the output vector, output vector y is equal to y one through the i n, something like this, right? Given the the input matrix, input matrix, input matrix looks like this. Then what does it mean? X one through the x n, right? Then, then, 
this the ro number of rows uh, and number of columns uh, what number of columns are t right if we if we um if we suppose the uh the input vector x is a rt uh rd vector okay so then the shape of the this input vector uh, input matrix x is the n by t okay okay in this case in this case for a uh, prob uh, likelihood of the output vector y with the uh, a given input likelihood y given input matrix x then and model parameter model parameter the model parameter means means something like this the some kind of parameter that that approximate these samples well okay so this is the uh, our final goal in the linear regression right so then the the likelihood of the, of the output vector y given input matrix x and model parameter w then we can represent the, this one looks like this what does it mean what does it mean because the uh, this each point are independent we can compute the this probability by using the decomposed probability something like p y2 P two W blah 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 P Y N X N W because they are they are independent, okay? Then okay, let's say this is independent because this independent independence, okay? Then, then, what is that? What is that? If we, if we assume on the this noise, if we have the assumption that noise E n is the zero mean Gaussian random variable with the variance, uh, sigma square. Then we can represent the this probability as a random uh, Gaussian random variable something like this. Why? Why? What is that? This is the estimated, right? This is the ground truth, right? Right? Then. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Let's say this is the estimated value here. Then let's say this is the uh, y n something like that. Then y n. If we fix, if we fix the this value, then y n can be point here, 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 something like that. Then what is the this difference? It's just the e n, right? So the probability of the y n in terms of the w t x n is looks like this because we have assumption that uh, this is the what Gaussian random variable, Gaussian random variable, right? So it means that this one can be represent f y n given w transpose times x n with a sigma channel. 
uh, sigma square something like that. Okay, so this is the uh, probability interpretation of the Fourier regression, and then and then, what is the goal of the linear regression? What is the, our goal? What do you want to do? We have to find the, this parameter, right? Right? We have to find the, this parameter W, right? Then, what does it mean? We have to find the parameter W that minima that minimize no, no maximize because this is a probability right then we have to find the parameter w then maximize this one then maximize this term right so what does it mean the probability viewpoint for linear regression is that we maximize we have to maximize uh, this likelihood this likelihood over the choice of the model this uh, net or the model parameter, which is the best model, is the one that maximizes the this likelihood. So, so we have to find the W, then maximize this one. Okay. So this is the our core. So this is the goal of the linear regression, right? So then, but as you know. The Gaussian random variable have the some exponential value, right? So actually, it is hard to deal with. So we need the uh, uh, more uh, more clever uh, clever uh, mathematical technique to to deal with. So we introduce the logarithm of the likelihood. So because so actually this is optimization problem. So the absolute value is not important. But if we just if you just uh, logarithm technique, just like the just log, right? Then the optimum, the optimum value, uh, optimal solution is not changed, right? So by using the this logarithm, we can make uh, this function easier to solve. Okay, then maximize the this logarithm term. Log, uh, uh, log term, then this is called the log likelihood. Then, what is the what is the uh, what is the log likelihood? Let's say the loss log likelihood W is equal to the log of the this term, log of the this term. Then, then how can we solve? How can we solve? We already know the this term is the this one, right? This one, right? Then how log n is equal to one through the n, right? Then Gaussian random variable y n through the w transpose x n to the sigma. Jago, like that. Then, what is that? Log n is equal to one. Then, some kind of constant value, some kind of constant value with the exponential, with the what? Two sigma square minus y n minus w transpose x n with the some some distance like, right? Then, then from the log multiplication and exponential, then it will be some kind of the summation from n is equal to one through the n, and and because the log exponential term will be will be uh, eliminated, right? Then there only exists um, some kind of this term here with a constant value constant value right so from this one we can get the this point from here okay with some con constant term here this is a constant term okay 
So any kind of constant value can be can be here, but it's not important because this is only constant term. So uh, it can be uh, ignored when we solve the optimization problem. Okay. So to summarize, the the log likelihood probability can be represent of like this. Okay. Interestingly, interestingly, if you remember the loss function of the if you remember the uh, MSC loss mean squared error, what looks like that, right? With the uh, uh, ground truth value and the uh, estimated value with the uh, L to norm, something like that, right? Interestingly. The shape of the MSC loss or the MSC cost function and the log likelihood it looks similar. It has some difference but it looks similar, right? With the this term, this term, this term, this term, right? Right? To summarize, to summarize, maximizing the log likelihood, maximizing the log likelihood is equivalent to the Minimizing the MSC loss. Minimizing the MSC loss. Why? Because they have the my uh negative ne negative term here, right? So in other words, the argument W of the log MSC W actually this this was the goal of the um, core of the logic uh, linear regression, right? Linear linear regression in the, our previous lecture, right? Then it 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 is equivalent to the argmax argmax of the uh, log likely term in terms of W, right? So this is the probability uh, probabilistic interpretation of the uh, linear regression problem. So this uh, maximum log likelihood, maximum likely, uh, maximum likelihood estimator M and Lee can also be interpreted as finding the model, finding the model W, under which the observed observed data is most likely to have the been to have been generated from. Okay, so this is the probability interpretation of the uh, uh, linear regression problem. Then by using the this concept, we will talk about what is the uh, probabilistic interpretation of the K-means clustering algorithm, and then derive the Gaussian mixture model. Okay.